What is going on, comic fam? It's your boy, the bearded comic bro, and I am joined by comic creators, Alex and Matt. Welcome to the show. Hey, man. Thanks hey. for having us on. Man, I'm excited to talk to you both. Um, we ran into we ran into each other what two years ago at Terrificon. Uh, met you both talking about digital pools. You guys signed the trade for me, hooked me up with issue five, uh, and then. We're like, yeah, let's set up an interview. Let's get you guys on the show. And then a year <laughs> happens, we run into the other terrific on again. And we're like, I'm like, it's going to happen. We got to make it happen. So I'm glad that uh, we're able to come together uh, virtually now. <laughs> yeah, no, it makes sense. It's uh, I think as the more people we talk to every single year, the same thing happens. So it's almost like I mean, everyone's just so excited at terrific, you know, to hang right. out with each other. And then they're like, yeah, hey, let's do this. And then life, you know, we it's almost you go into this fog of like, bliss during terrific con and everyone's having a good time and then life happens right <laughs> right yeah. it's i mean it's natural truth like you hang out with friends my wife and i do the all all the time and we're like we gotta do this more often and then three months four months go by and we're like <laughs> oh we just suck at coordinating yeah, <laughs> yeah. so uh, yeah. it's it happens with the comic side too i guess so <laughs> yeah it's all um, good it's well all good. welcome welcome to the show you both um you are the creative team behind the comic the digital pools and I want to hop into that and talk all things about that and how it's connected with Macroverse and things like that. But before we do, I got to know, have you always had a love for comics? Like, or was this kind of something that came in later in life? Um, but, uh, Matt, why don't you go ahead? Since, since you're the, the, the artist maestro, you can kind of give your background <laughs> first. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a simple story. Uh, Dime Store Comics, when I was r- real young, it was, uh, Star Wars, you know, off the racks in the in the supermarket um which i still have and they're just beautiful i mean i think i still have them yeah i do but they're just they're so like classic uh probably this was probably like 1980 or something and just a little kid and not not any idea that i wanted to do this but just the idea of telling a story with pictures was like bing 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 that's so cool and then high school you know taking the bus to the comic book shop um like a pilgrimage just, you know, to get there 45 minutes by bus and then spend the day in the city reading comics in this, in, you know, in the park. And then t- another 45 minutes on the bus, which was awesome because you had this hall of comics. So, yeah, and, you know, probably the same story as everybody, you know, just got hooked at one point. Yeah. That idea of text and images combined. So it's I always loved reading, but it was like, oh, and I like to draw, too. This is pretty cool. So yeah, that, that's how I got into it. What about you, Alex? Yeah, I think I think uh, I, um, you know, I remember very vividly going to the grocery store, you know, when I was younger, and pointing at, you know, we, we didn't have a lot of comic book shops like near us where, where we were. So I I dealt with like the comics that were on the racks. Like I specifically remember picking up a Carnage, uh, Carnage, uh, Spider Man issue, and uh, my mom maybe put it back. She said it looked too violent, like on the front. So, but eventually I did get it. I, I asked my grandfather, who who was to- totally fine with it. Um, but I had a little bit of, I guess, a little bit of interest in the beginning with Marvel stuff. Um, but was always interested in, you know, DC, Batman, the animated series. Like I was big into Toonami, like when I was in my younger days. And so after school, watching, you know, BTAS and like being obsessed with that, that kind of drove me to DC Comics a little bit more. So I dove, dove into lore. And then I don't think I really got in to comics until I was probably in, in college. You know, up until that point, I was just a big reader. I, I read science fiction. That was like my my thing. A little bit of fantasy, but mostly my hard science fiction, Dune, um, Foundation series, uh, you know, um, what else? Like the Forever War, like that kind of like the core science fiction novels. And then when I got into college, I worked with a friend who got me in, back into back into comics, and basically with like more like the uh, graphic novels. So I got to pick up on a lot of the stories you know that I had missed, you know, when I was a kid, and kind of just dive into like the omnibus of you know of, of any any of my favorite writers at the time. Um, and then I got in more into Alan Moore as I was older. I could understand maybe those deeper uh, deeper meanings that he was trying to put behind with Swamp Thing and it got kind of enthralled with that went down his rabbit hole and that led me to you know uh, Neil Gaiman with uh, Sandman and so I was always kind of slanted more towards the indie indie side or like the darker uh less su- superhero stuff I guess and then yeah thinking about this story in particular um you know the idea for me was like I've had this story in my head, digital pool story in my head for 
almost 10 years now. And it was originally like a short fiction idea I had. And then it kind of evolved into, oh, this would be kind of cool if I write just challenging myself. What if I write a TV script? Um, and then a few years ago, I was going through some changes in my life and I was kind of in this mood of like, you know what, let's just go for this. Let's see where, how far I can take it. And a lot of visual elements in this. So I think TV might be a little expensive. That, that seems like a, a real uphill battle and, um, you know, a lot of voices in that corner. And I was like, if I really want to make this alive, like turn this story into something, you know, that make it tangible, then, you know, comics would be a great way to kind of showcase that. And, did a Google search for uh, artists in the area and uh, got connected with Matt. And then uh, yep. I pitched him my idea and um, thanks to Google and, and a few beers at, at our, at our local dive bar. Uh, I think we were, we were on the same page about a lot of stuff. And four years later, here we are, which is crazy. Man, it's usually not a good thing if someone Googles you, but apparently it was a good thing in this case. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> yeah. You I, honestly, I, 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 historically i've gotten tons of those like emails and calls and you know after after a while you you kind of get a sense of you know whether they're legit or not and whether it's for you know because i was a history of uh doing uh, illustration for folks and design and often it's like you know for every 10 calls you get one of them is maybe turns into something so it's a lot of fielding and i remember getting off the phone uh after talking to Alex, it was probably, I don't know, Alex, was it like an hour or something? And yeah. I kind of had a, a light in my eye. I was like, I told my wife, I was like, yeah, I don't know, man. I re he's got a really good idea. This is pretty cool. Like, I think this might turn, like, you know, I was, I was pumped. I was really excited because he gave me the pitch. You know, he gave me the hundred floor elevator pitch, you know, and uh, he sold me. Well, moving along with the story um matt you were sold by the pitch alex what was the pitch so yes. if people haven't heard of yeah. this story yet yeah sure so um uh i don't think i could i could get it i we i've, I've done this pitch for so long it's evolved uh, i've probably gone through a few iterations since i gave it to matt but um no we want the exact one you yeah gave the matt. exact one so i'll try to try to harness those at this point i think i could time. do it yeah <laughs> the the story is set in the near future in boston 2035 and um, it's an optimistic future, right? This isn't, there's not zombies running all over the place. We're not ruled by evil, evil AI, you know, yet maybe. Um, but right now it's, it's somewhat optimistic. Um, society has just crossed this, uh, this era called the, the information renaissance, which thanks to the help of decentralized internet, people have access to information. So that access to information is open and really free to anyone. And so uh, fantastic inventions have kind of occurred you know, uh, across the globe and specifically within the Northeast, um, these folks have uh, figured out a way to marry uh, new technology that allows you to connect to computer systems through this stuff called conductive fluid, and then putting you into a visceral version of the internet called the Exodus. So the Exodus is this realistic simulated environment where you could be anybody, do anything, go wherever you want um, and experience whatever you want. Um, only limited only by the fortitude of your mind. So you can go down in deep levels and create these fantastical experiences, but depending on how much your mind can take, how strong your mind is, that's kind of like the limiting factor. Okay. On the other side too, there's people there who may not have, you know, you could create joyous experiences, right? But there may be people who want to live out dark fantasies, right? Or, or kind of create, you know, these environments where, you know, they may put you under kind of some subjugated madness, right? And so as this invention kind of takes off with the uh, era of the digital pools, which allows people to connect. And what they do is they bathe themselves in the, in these uh, kind of submerge themselves in this conductive fluid and the, the signals that connect you to the Exodus connect through nanomachines that live within your bodies. And then you're just transported into this, to this new world. And so as this world's kind of evolving, this technology is kind of evolving, the government hears rumors of mind crime happening you know, and there's this, this technology has got some value to it. Right. And so the government kind of wants to protect that and see how they can use it, but also they want to police it. And so as this technology is evolving, they fund these federal programs in these major municipalities. And our, our story focuses on Boston, which is like the hub of Exodus development. And so we follow this Lieutenant detective, uh, Julio La Rosa, who's somewhat on his way to retirement. This is kind of like his moonlight gig. He accepts the role of like the head of this virtual crime task force 
And he's partnered with a, a contractor called Rico Teller. And Rico Teller is actually one of the co-founders of the exodus that occurred you know, within Boston. He's decided to help out, help out the, uh, the, the police department there and try to figure out, you know, what's going on. And so we basically follow Rico and La Rosa, um, you know, through the storyline um, where they, they meet, you know, fantastic folks who are trying to use this exodus system for good, but also, uh, you know, Rico runs into some old enemies of his that, you know, may see other methods or other uses for the excess that, that that may not be so good for society so it's a very much a slow burn kind of crime cyber cyber noir um thriller that, that that's 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 what it's it, what it is and uh you know we've been working working at it for a few years now and yeah. yeah it's been a lot it's been it's been living in my head for so long that um now we're just we're getting to the parts where things get really crazy in the story and lots you know more action-packed and uh yeah i'm super excited to see where it goes from here so how do you do with the pitch, Matt? Do you do all right? <laughs> That's it. Yeah, no, th- that it's great. Yeah, I always think about the Exodus like, um, oh, I don't know, like virtual reality on steroids, where you know you, you dive in and it's not just visual. You just you're just there. Yeah, and uh, I think that's what kind of sold me that idea because that's where my mind lives. This I I, look, I read a lot of science fiction too, and. I always love to think about the near future. Like what, what is it going to be like? You know, it's not even science fiction, really. It's, it's future fiction because a lot of this stuff, I think the story Alex is writing, some version of this will, will exist in, you know, I don't, I don't want to put a date on it, but it will, it def, it'll definitely exist in the next 15, 10, 15 years, some, some version of this. And um, I think that came across when he first pitched it to me, it, it sort of, it it resonated as authentic, like not just like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if? Yeah. But like you can kind of see the technology where it is now, and even four years ago when he pitched this to me, where it could possibly go. And I was like, yeah, this is actually kind of plausible. So wouldn't it be fun to, you know, spend some time in a world like this and just let your brain, um well let alex's brain but you know we do have brainstorming sessions so there's a little yeah. bit of me in there too no no yeah matt matt doesn't give himself enough credit i think um what's what's great about our relationship and i would say the key to any kind of working relationship creative relationship is um you know you can have a great idea we live in a world where independent creators have a lot of tools at their disposal to kind of get their ideas out there find your audience through social media crowdfund your program you know fund the actual production of of the actual book um the hardest thing really is finding a partner to to work with and um i think you know matt and i got really lucky so we could we share some of the same beliefs and kind of same similar direction where the story story can go um and yeah i think uh it's been it's been a great ride so far and and lucky for us too then we found other partners like like macroverse um which is which is our digital partner right now um and they've been fully on board with what we want to do direction of the story fits very well into what their mission is um so things every single year we look back and like wow we've you know keeping the grind mindset um has helped kind of push us further and hopefully i would say you know within the next year or so our story is just gonna you know reach an even wider a wider audience yeah it's it was so cool because um, I, I know I, I read this when I picked this up two years ago at Trivicon, but, you know, I'm prepping for the interview. I'm like, I got to go back and read. So I, I did a little bit. I read, I read it. I want to do it kind of twofold. I read it uh, physically and then I read it via digital format. Uh, and, and what's really funny before we hop too much into the digital format, um, I completely forgot as I was reading, I was like, man, characters look really familiar um and there's a cameo of the second probably the second best bearded bald man on youtube uh in that book uh, of bruce and stephanie i mean the, i forgot they were oh uh, yeah that's right that's I right i completely forgot and <laughs> but i was like looking i'm like oh my gosh <laughs> yeah yeah that was a that was a so that's one thing the benefits of Kickstarter, also just the community, independent yeah. community, we're able to talk with folks like yourself and then interact with them. And yeah, it just came up one day. We were like, the, I think they, what was it, Matt? They, they wanted to be drawn. They just threw it out there. I'm like, all right, well, we can, we can do that. And sure enough, we found a way to work them in. It's been pretty cool. Yeah. Their, uh, their pitch was, um, you got to put us in, but you got to give Stephanie big boobs. 
So uh, that was my mandate. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully they don't mind. And, and if you, they said it on their podcast too. So I was like, yeah. <laughs> and if you've never seen that. the Bruce and Stephanie show, uh, you would understand it's very fitting that they both would 100% demand it. Both of them would have. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's um, funny. So you so. mentioned about this progression of how you can see the technology happening. And, you know, as I'm reading this, I'm like, oh, wow. I like, we're kind of there in elements of it. Um, but you're starting to see technology advance, you know, throughout even this, what you said, four years that since you've been kind of writing it, I know it's been in your head longer, Alex. Mm-hmm. Um, and did it always, I know we're going to transition a little bit into Macroverse and how you guys are connected with this digital. There wasn't a mindset of it being digital as a comic originally, right? Like you were set out, to do it i'm guessing physical and then opportunities approached or it would yeah yeah i'd say that you know again um matt and i were grinding it out i think when we first started off um the story has kind of evolved over time but the first iteration we we had the idea of the core story and we wanted to put it put together a pitch package for for different publishers which is kind of like the 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 traditional route like seeing seeing what what came of that and and we you know we, we got some traction there um generally they wanted to see a little bit more they, or they had some feedback on on notes and asked us to to kind of like maybe send something back after a couple months. Um, but as we were kind of going along and we put a great package together, we had like an eight page teaser and Matt and I started talking because that was like right as COVID was almost hitting. Yeah. And we were thinking like, yep. you know, the Kickstarter stuff is kind of coming because comic book stores were and the whole industry was kind of changing. Right. And Kickstarter yeah. kind of came up and flared up and we were like. You know, there might be something to this. Why don't we try a Kickstarter just to get it off the ground to get the first couple of issues going? And so we started doing that. And um, I will say, you know, our a local comic book shop, BoomTube Comics, uh, you know, they helped out selling the stuff on the ground. We had a great salesman and Dan, um, Dan Mercurio, who, who who runs the runs the ship over there. Uh, and that kind of just got us going. Like, you know, let's let's keep doing this. And so we we did. What was it uh, five? kickstarters um over about a year and a half period so we were cranking out work i mean credit mm. kudos to matt I, I feel like i always had the easy job because i'm like <laughs> creating the story then he's got to do the penciling the inking the coloring he finds a way to do it all at once and, and a really really great job uh, at that but we put together what was it, like 120 130 pages in about a year and a half like we were we were crushing it um yeah we were doing we were doing an issue every three ish three-ish months, which, you know, if you have an inker and a penciler and a writer and an editor, and you got a whole team, that's, you know, that's easy-ish. But for us, it was really just Alex and I. So yeah, pretty proud of that. I mean, yeah. And the plan was to keep going at that point. Um, And then Macroverse, Evan, Evan uh, Matthews at Macroverse, he, we kind of got into contact uh, through Instagram um, which is like our big, a big social media presence, I would say is, is Instagram. And we just started talking one day and saw what they were doing on the app, you know, finding a new creative way to kind of show comics in like a digital format that yeah. wasn't just scrolling through panels is really more cinematic. And Matt and I saw the potential because as we've made every, every single issue has been better than the last, like we've, we found our, we've honed our craft and the story is also like found, like begun to, we, I knew where the ending was. I knew where the middle was. I knew where the beginning was. But as we were kind of going through, like, okay, we we know we see things as as kind of evolve, and you know, we we have we we found the hook. We found the beats uh, to the overall narrative. And then when we saw what Macroverse was doing, we we're like, wow, we could we could really turn this into a cool experience um, yeah. on this app. Yeah. yeah, and so that that's why we got hooked up with them. So what is if someone's listening um, and hasn't gotten to experience Macroverse, what's the kind of the idea behind it. Uh, yeah, so it's a it's a digital platform uh, for for reading comics, um, and they have a unique uh, format. Uh, it's called the Tap Story. So uh, it's really easy. It's just you can tap. It's a mobile. It's a mobile app, so you can tap forward to progress the story, or you can uh, tap on the left side of your screen to to go back to reread something, and that's it. But what it allows you to do. Uh, in a different way than than comics. I mean, comics does it do it do it does it too. But you're you're confronted by a page, and then you can read it quickly to absorb the art, and then you can go back and read it slowly. You know, you you're kind of in control of that. Um, 
but the the timing and the pacing of it in a traditional comic uh is is more fluid so with macroverse uh since you're actually in control of the pacing uh by you're you're actively tapping on the screen to advance the story it like sucks you in like you get it's super immersive because you you almost feel like you're you're advanced that you you are you're advancing the story and if you want to go back and rewatch a scene you can watch it slower you can watch it faster and i my experience with it is that it's super immersive and i i just lean into my phone and get get kind of sucked in um you almost feel like you're part of it and it has a we we we're able to do things on the app just with the the panel layout and zooming in and panning across panels uh, that you can't do with a regular comic that just opens up a new uh, new avenues for us for just storytelling you know so it's it's a it i don't know alex you'd say it's more cinematic right yeah it, we we definitely control i'd say it's like interactive storyboarding almost i feel like so it's got that cinematic lens to it and then matt can almost deconstruct his art and use the layers in creative ways as he kind of compiles stuff on his tablet, you know, on his, on his iPad, you know, drawing, drawing with his, his software. You know, then we could think about like, okay, how, when someone down, you know, reses into the Exodus, for instance, like we can make a layer where like through a few taps, like their body like appears, yeah. you know, kind of giving the special effects where you know, we could do that. We could, his art shines through on the page, but it's a, its own unique thing, but it's a great way to kind of transfer that, for and as the, as the episodes are broken up on the app, like there's about three episodes per issue. I'd say about 130 taps, but it goes by quickly, like five or ten minutes. You know, you can go through an episode, and um, you know, it's 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 uh, it's almost like a procedural crime crime drama, which is exactly what we're writing, you know, here in a comic book format. And it just naturally, it's it's been really cool seeing that transfer uh, elegantly over to the Macroverse app as as they continue to develop you know, what they're building on the overall platform. Yeah. And I'd recommend checking out this, this app because I, I think when I first heard, I was like, Oh, a digital reader. And you're like, Oh, well you can, you know, you can click in the, in the panels kind of move. You. There's a difference. So you're not reading the PDF and you're not even how some of the, I feel like digital reader apps now it can move you just from a soul, a single panel to another panel. This just like, there's something you're right. It's something about the taps where you're like, you're bringing in pictures. And what was really interesting is there's a panel layout in the physical form of where there's four people kind of coming into the Exodus and one's like fully in one's half. And like your artwork, Matt is beautiful on page of how that does it. But what I feel like something like Macroverse allows you to do is they can all come in now individually without and having their, and it's yeah. not having to, it's telling the story in a different way. It's completely, complimenting it's like a movie but it's not it's still like it's a comic movie like i don't it's so interesting to... no that's a great way of, that's a great way of describing it and it's it's so it's so bite-sized and it works i think just for our for our world today like speaking of yeah. technology and where it's going like yeah you know, i've been traveling a lot for work and so every time you know usually tuesdays or wednesday mornings are where we have new episodes up or something on the app and waiting in line at you know waiting in line at my gate and I just whip out my phone as I'm have my you know have my ticket ready. I'm just like tapping through on public transportation. You know, if I'm on the subway mm -hmm. in New York or something, it's really easy to kind of get through an episode and then all right, put pocket it for later, and then I can catch back up with it. You know, um, on my way home, for instance. And so yeah, it's it's been a it's been a good ride. It's also allowed me uh, and a map included, like to kind of go back and say if we could do this again, like how can we expand the narrative, right? Mm -hmm kind of may rearrange just a couple things. And so that's that's allowed us to kind of put the macroverse, it's almost like our director's cut of the story. So we almost mm. have like final cut, that's our version. That's gonna be, and it aligns with the hard, hardcover books. And there's there's more we could talk about uh, this and kind of our future plans for, for hardcover or, you know, uh, paper, yeah. paper releases, but the macroverse cut itself is like the true narrative. And we have like a, a great way to kind of expand the narrative and kind of, um, you know, squeeze out as much as we can you know from the app yeah it almost seems like there were subtle changes maybe of balloon bubbles and wording even when it comes to obviously there's the changes that like i was saying a matt what you can see of your art of you know rather than 
a kind of a progression on that one panel. You can end, you can have them individually pop in. Um, how has that been for you then, Matt? Of have you have you had to relearn kind of like how you approach creating art for it, like and processing yeah. of like creating for macro versus digital versus creating for physical copies, like because I'm sure that there has to be a little bit of a learning curve or a challenge with that. Yeah, it's it's actually it is a little more work, but it's fun work. So you can you know the program I use Clip Studio. It's like a Photoshop ish program. So you yeah. you're everything is built in layers, and uh, so you can, if I'm smart about it, as I'm drawing it, I'm thinking about the taps, mm. and I can be like, oh, let me pull this figure out and put him on his own layer, and because when we tap through it. You know, we can save him at this distance, but then we can also save him mm. closer and we can create this cool zoom effect. Or I'll do stuff with blur where the background is blurred and the figure is clear. And then when we zoom in, I'll switch it and the figure is blurred and the background gets clear, stuff like that. Um, so, yeah. So now I, you know, I compose thinking about thinking about oper- not every panel because I think it would just get tired. But, yeah. you know, impactful panels where you really want to communicate something and, and heighten the heighten the emotion. Yeah, I'll, I'll throw something like, like I was working on a panel the other day um, where this character is in the simulation. He gets uh, thrown back to Earth and I put him on his own layer so I could show him fall. So he's here and then he's here, mm-hmm. you, you know, tap one, tap two, and he, you know, he's able to fall. So little things like that, not trying to create animation, but just to give give a flow and a, a bit of movement. Yeah, it, it it is a really interesting experience. I'm glad that I read it in physical form and then read it just to see the difference of like how it how the how you engage in the story differently. I think. Um, so there's, I think what six. I I think I got the trades. What four issues, and then there's issue five, and then you got uh the pre is this is episode zero like a prequel Mm -hmm. yeah and Mm -hmm. you said on macroverse each there's three episodes right now and each episode is basically an issue is that correct that's correct okay no each each episode is each issue is about three to four okay three episodes is about one okay Mm -hmm. yeah yeah so right now there's basically one issue on the app or is there more uh that's probably i mean that plus the prologue like the prologue is on is on the app Plus, um, so we've got, yeah, but the first issue is on there right now. Um, the first, the, the fourth episode should be released either tonight or tomorrow morning. Um, and then we also have an anthology series, which is basically, you know, crazy stories that are crazy experiences that maybe people go through as they're connected into the Exodus. So there's like a parallel kind of, it's almost like a Black Mirror-esque. Like, yeah. Uh, so very separate storylines, but there's a hidden, there's a theme in all of it. Um, that kind of connects together as 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 we move along in the story. So that's also up there. That's that's what five five stories. Matt, two of which Matt Matt wrote uh, himself. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which is which is pretty cool. And then um and then we've got two that we created together as well as like the we have like this we we call it our crypt keeper. You know, tales from the crypt, like the guy who kind of like helps yeah. lead tie everything together. Um, uh, it's it's a uh, ours we call the mammoth, I guess. Um, and so he has his own little, uh, his series there to kind of bookends everything. Um, but yeah, we're releasing new episodes every week okay. and then that'll, this first end of the first season, to, I think will probably come end of October. Look, there's yeah. about nine, nine episodes per season, nine or 10 episodes per season. Um, yeah, we're looking at, it's just, it's really cool seeing everything come together. We, we, we've, we've been looking at the same art for like two, two and a half years, like work on this for a very long time. So that's when people are like, Hey, when's the next uh, issue coming out? Like, you know, give us some time. Like we're, we're, we're kind of recalibrating some, a few things. Um, but one of the things I will say about Macaverse since kind of one of the announcements that we wanted to make, and, you know, a lot of people kind of question, like, are you abandoning the, the paper format, you know, the actual physical issue size? And I would say, no, no, we are not, um, physical issues will always exist, you know, for us, whether that's in like a trade paperback format or, or floppy, like, you know, we always, you know, that's kind of, 
something that's that's very near and dear to us. Um, we experimented a little bit with like a horizontal prologue format for Trifcon. I think it was it was unique itself. Um, we 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 might stick with that format de depending. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like depending on that, how how it goes. And and what I mean by that is because Macroverse, you know, they we we partnered up with them. We're officially an original series on their platform. You know, uh, on on Macroverse, but they've also uh, they're in the process of finalizing a publishing deal with a big, big publisher. So, uh, which is great for us. Cause like, that's like a dream come true, which means that, um, you know, cross fingers, but the digital pools will be available everywhere across the country. Um, if this, if this goes through, so yeah. it, what form that will be, I'm, we're not sure yet, but, um, we're, we're very excited. I mean, this is, something Matt and I have been working for a very long time mm. on. And uh, that's one of the reasons why we're kind of like, I have to tell people just hold on. Like there, there are things moving in the background. The new issues are coming out. You know, we just got to kind of coordinate a lot of different things. So you, you guys have kind of fully embraced now creating into the macroverse, right. Of taking what you've already created, adapting it for their digital platform. And then, you know, continuing, hopefully creating stories, through that and then whatever happens with deals and stuff that ideally then they'll start to you can do some physical stuff then through that yeah forward. oh yeah that's and that's definitely happening it's yep. it's definitely happening and we're we're we can't wait to tell you who 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 they're working with um yeah i think it, their their values align i mean perfectly with what macroverse has planned and yeah i we're just excited because the only distribution that we've been able to do is basically how far Matt and I can drive across uh, Connecticut <laughs> before we get called back home. You know, I know like, and if I didn't drive to Connecticut, I wouldn't have heard of it for a while. Exactly. So, exactly. Um, that's so it's, has it changed then how you create in any way of saying, thinking like, all right, they're going to experience this probably now moving forward for the first time digitally. So has that adapted how you write you know, for Matt and Matt, how you're, you know, what you're like when you're creating stuff, it sounds like a little bit of doing layers and stuff, but is that change your focus at all or not really? You're like, no, we just still create the way we want and we just put it in a digital format. Well, the the one, the one big shift for, for Macroverse is that they have this really cool community storytelling uh, aspect to the, to the app that's going to be dropping pretty soon. Well, it's already it's already dropped on discord, but the, the, the comics that were created from this uh, are going to be released pretty soon. And, and basically the idea is digital pools is Alex's story. It's his core story. So if you think about like uh, in terms of star Wars, which everyone can relate to Alex wrote star Wars, but uh, we're asking the community to write stories in the digital pools world mm. and the best stories are going to get upvoted by the community and actually turned into uh, multi-page comics. And we've seen this happen. I don't know, Alex, what is it? Five or six times in the Macroverse community where they've, where they've done this with other series. And uh, so ours, our, our universe is going to be dropped, um, you know, within the next couple months. And huh. uh, we're really excited about that. I mean, to see, to see, if you think about like the Mandalorian and um, Boba Fett and Ahsoka, all these you know parallel stories in the the, the core you know that raw running along the core story, yeah. people are going to be able to create a character, an avatar, in the digital pools world, and then once they have that, they can write a story or pitch a story, and then it'll get turned into a comic book, and then that will get turned into an anthology series which will then get will you know be, be able to be read on the app so we're really yeah, excited the, about that and the good thing is too like the creators have full ownership over that yeah like that that's a big thing for macverse like you know ip ip ownership and that's always been a big thing just across the comic book industry right you know if i create right. a character like i want to have you know, there's a lot of artists out there who don't see a lot of returns from that and focus from day one from macverse is like you know, independent creators matter and even the people who've always wanted to be a creator that may not have had you know all the tools in their toolbox to kind of make it happen like we're here yeah. to help show run those ideas and uh you have full ownership of it so we're excited to see what the community creates and who knows maybe something like boba fett you know it did for star wars its own it kind of took off on its own environment and 
went into the extended universe Something like that can happen for digital pools. So we're, we're curious to see where it can go. Well, I want to respect both of you all's time. Um, and as we, you know, are wrapping up, uh, is there anything that we haven't gotten to hit on about, you know, what you're creating with digital pools or just in comics in general or macroverse that you wanted to touch on real quick? I mean, we have, we have a kind of a big announcement. I don't know if we're ready to share that. Which Okay. Not, not the. I don't know, Alex. Are we? Is that something we want to? Probably. Well, let's. We'll, we'll wait for that. Yeah. We, we, there, there's more announced. There's a lot of. Uh, let's just say we have a lot of irons in the fire. Yes. We have a lot of irons in the fire of other, other types of other directions like that that digital pools can go. And and again, Macaverse has been fully supportive of that and and uh, just helping build out the world. I will say that for Macaverse itself. So uh, they're also they just they just announced a partnership with uh, like the comic DMC. So that's that's going to be dropping soon. So you know DMC, you know as in like from from Run DMC that have that exclusive exclusive comic series like through through Macaverse. There's going to be a bunch of bunch of titles coming on Macaverse soon that everyone's pretty familiar with. I would say so definitely keep your eye on that. Um, the community is alive and well on Discord as 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 well. So if you're um, want to hop in there and join the conversation um yeah. I, we'll be sure to share the link with you um greg at, at, at for that and what we'd also like to do too is share you know for all of the listeners out there get you know, we have a three month free link like a qr code so yeah. anyone who wants to sign up and give it a shot and have three months give it a whirl and um you know after that's only five bucks a month so there's yeah. a lot of comic content right now there's going to be even more you know in, in the next three months nice so it sounds like there's a lot cooking, a lot behind the scenes um, that, you know, you're excited to eventually get to talk about. So with that being said, where can people follow along with you both to find out when things drop? Yeah, sure. Um, uh, I'll just do my own Insta first, uh, Matt Stevens art and uh, on Twitter, sorry, X, uh, Matt Stevens now. <laughs> and. Um, yeah, and then our our comic page is dark web, uh, dark web comics, dark web underscore comics, dark web comics underscore, yeah. dark web comics underscore, and um, yeah, Alex. Yeah, and so for, for me, my personal page is uh, on X. Um, it's a uh, robnetstories dot dot eth dot eth. Um, I'm on I'm on Instagram as well. AJ eight AGR eight six five. Um, I also just started my own Substack, so I'm trying to venture into prose storytelling just to kind of work up work on my chops there so uh the links are available on our on our instagram pages but it's strange tales s-t-r-n-g-e tales um at substack um so so check that out if you want to you know give a give some science early science fiction of mine a start there as well um check but yeah, it. it's very good yeah and but instagram is the best way to get in contact okay. with us and, and keep in touch yeah, yeah, yeah. And I will have all the links that we talked about. So uh, for both Alex and Matt in the description, if you're listening uh, via podcast, you can find it wherever you're listening on your podcast. And if you're watching via YouTube here, uh, just click the description button and you'll see um, all their links as well as stuff, links to Macroverse and, um, you know, the free trial and things like that. Because I think this is something that you really do just want to explore and, you know, highly recommend checking out the digital pools and, you know, just getting to immerse yourself in this really cool new experience. I think it's, it's really cool. So. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. And thank you yeah, so much for having you. us on. Grant. Absolutely. Gang. Um, go check it out. Go check out Macroverse. Go check out the digital pools. Um, actually, that's your first thing. Once you go to Macroverse, check out digital pools. There's other great comics, check them out, but first check out the digital pools. Okay. And then go explore other worlds. Um, but with that being said, man, Alex, Matt, thank you both for coming on. And hopefully y'all can find some time to curl up, grab a book, and nerd out. Peace.